Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Downs and welcome to the introduction to Open Broadcasting Systems. Uh, this is the OBS environment here. I'm doing this little clip before the uh, actual showing of the uh, session that I did because we didn't capture that part. It was a bit hard to actually deliver the session and capture us setting up to deliver the session. So I'm re-recording this after the fact. So here I am in OBS and uh, I wanted to show you how we go about it. So the first thing we need to do is set up our session in YouTube. So let's uh, open up YouTube here. I'm going to open up this. Well, okay, there we go. So let's go to YouTube. And uh, everyone knows where it is, I hope, www.youtube.com. And so here we are in YouTube. And up here in the upper right, it's kind of hard to see. I wonder if I can make that a bit bigger. Ah, that's a little bit better. Uh, you see this little create icon here. So I'm going to click on that. And... I could upload a video, but right now I'm going to go live. And that takes me into the studio. There are three options on the left-hand side. And again, it went small on us again. Let's see if I can make that big again. Yes, good. So uh, here is stream or webcam or manage. Manage will take care of editing previous things that I've done. I'm not going to worry about that in this video. Webcam you would use if you just wanted to stream straight from your web camera onto YouTube. Very handy, very fast, very easy. And if all you want to do is broadcast yourself, that's what you should use. But we want to do some more complicated things. And that's why we're using open broadcasting systems. So we're going to click on stream and that'll set up our stream. So. I'm going to make this small again because we need to be able to see the whole screen. Uh, so basically there's two sections here. On the top is the editing section and on the bottom is the streaming section. On the top, this is just to define what your stream is going to be. You click on edit and then you can type in your title. You can give a, a description. Um, you can set the visibility, which should be to public and will have to be public unless you're paying them money. Pick a category, maybe upload a thumbnail. Um, just click on that and pick your thumbnail and uh, you know, you pick an image as your thumbnail, whatever you want it to be. Um, uh, you have to indicate whether or not it's made for kids. That's required in YouTube. Generally, I just choose no, it's not made for kids. But if you are choosing yes, it's made for kids, you need to check with YouTube on what the conditions are for that. No paid promotion. If you want to put in tags, put in tags. Just type them in and put a comma after each tag. Like this. Um, make sure you select your language. Mine always defaults to Portuguese. I don't know why, it, but it always does. Uh, pick today's recording date. Pick your license. I always choose Creative Commons, of course. And then enter save. So now we've saved the details of our stream. The next thing we need is the stream key. It's usually a good idea to reset the key, although it's not necessary. So we've reset the key and now I'll copy the key. If I want to see the key, I just click on this little I here, but I can just click on copy and now I've copied the stream key to my clipboard. So that's all I need to do in this screen here. Next thing I need to do is install OBS. I only ever need to do this once, but I still need to do it. So let's search for OBS. And it comes up. Open Broadcaster Software. We'll click on the link. 
choose your operating system. I always use Windows. Save the file. And in Firefox, which is what I always use, the file saves here. I just I just click on the file name to run this file. It will run the installer. It'll take, you know, it'll ask you for permission to write to your computer. You give it permission and then it'll take just a few seconds and it will install your software for you. So that's downloading and installing OBS. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is to actually work with OBS itself. So, um, let me just put that screen to the top there. So ignore, ignore the, the Rod Serling effects from the Twilight Zone. We're really interested in what's happening at the very bottom here and a little bit about what's happening on top. And in fact, that's where we'll go first. So right at the very top where it says file, we'll click on file. And gee, I wish I'd like to make that bigger as well. I'm not sure I can. Um, well, I'll have to go with this. Click file and then settings. And that brings up a window, which I'm hoping that you're seeing. Yes, you are. Good. Um, and then on that window, click stream. And remember the stream key that we created in uh, YouTube. Now we're going to paste it in here. So right click and paste or use control V, paste it in and click OK. Now we're set to stream. That's all we needed to do to set up to stream. In order to start screaming, uh, screaming, in order to start streaming, we'll now go to the lower right hand corner here. And you can see I'm already recording. We would click on start streaming. This will get us streaming live to YouTube. And I'll show you that in action. I'm going to do this very quickly. Start streaming. Now we're streaming live. So let's have a look at that. So here's what it looks like on YouTube. That's not YouTube. Here's what it looks like on YouTube. So, and you can see there's there's a, a few second delay um, as, uh, as it plays in YouTube. Excellent connection. That's always nice to see. Uh, but now you can see yourself live streaming in YouTube. Uh, this is actually, as I record this demonstration, this is actually being broadcast to YouTube, so I'm not going to do it for very long. Um, once I'm done, we'll come back to OBS, and uh, or I can, I can do it this way first. First, I'll end the stream by clicking End Stream, and my stream will stop immediately. And then I'll come back into OBS, and click stop streaming and so now I've stopped streaming and when I'm done recording I'll click stop recording and those are the the key core steps to recording and streaming uh, something in open broadcasting system so now we'll switch to the main presentation that I did and we'll cover what's happening and many of the different options that are available uh, inside OBS uh, and, and streaming on YouTube. So I'll see you in just a second. Oh, of course you would do it like that. Uh, let's, sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> Slide show and primary monitor, use presenter view, turn that off. And I'm trying to find where it shows in the window because it's just easier if I do that. But I 
have this thing up on top that's from Zoom that's kind of making it hard. Setup slideshow. I always choose when I'm doing it online, I choose browsed by an individual in a window. And that way it's not full screen and it gives me options. So now let's try it. That's much better. So you see now it's in a window. I can move it around if I want. You know, I can size it, resize it. It's in a huge window. <laughs> Let's make that window a little smaller and more reasonable. There we go. That's better. Oh, not quite. I know this is. You should have this planned ahead of time, right? But I'm showing you everything here. All right, there we go. So here's my video, right? So you can see on this left-hand side, this is what OBS looks like with real content here. Um, and this is the slides. So here's what's going on. Think about what we're doing now. We're doing live streaming on Zoom or you can do it on YouTube, very common. You just click, you know, stream live or join a meeting or whatever, and your camera sends your image directly to the application. This is YouTube, this is Zoom, same thing. I know many of you can do that now because I can see your pictures. I can't see all of your pictures, but uh, I, I can see Randy has turned himself into a dog. That's impressive. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but if you turned on your video in Zoom, you could be showing your picture. And I, hopefully you know that. Oh, Randy has turned himself into a document camera. <laughs> or maybe a background video. Or, yeah. <laughs> So, what's happening? Well, we know what's happening, right? We have a camera, it's feeding a signal into a Zoom application that sends it to Zoom and everybody can see your smiling face. That's what's happening. Nothing more complicated than that. Oh, I know there's all kinds of stuff behind the scenes, but for our purposes, it's this simple. Now, as you know, oh, come on. Using controls. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. How annoying are you? Zoom. <laughs> As you know, you can so you can select. Oh, I see what's happening. Are, are you able to see that? You might be able to see that. Are you able to see the drop down at the top of my screen that says select a microphone? Can somebody tell me? No, no. That's, that's too bad. Zoom hides it, but okay. But I thought that might be the case. So anyhow, on Zoom and on many other applications, you have options to select your camera and select your microphone. This is what mine looks like. Yours will look a little bit different um, depending on what you have available. But if you select your microphone button, if you hit the little arrow beside your microphone button, this is on Zoom. So you have it right in front of you. You can even try it. Um, you get this screen. Well, the screen, this little window. And you can choose a microphone. So I always choose a nice microphone. There it is. Just, just for the quality of the sound, but whatever microphone that you have that works, works, right? There's also a microphone in your web camera very often, almost always. So you can select that, that's fine. You can also select a speaker. Um, and because 
I'm doing a backup audio recording on my, uh, so you can see it go in there. Um, on my phone, I always do a backup audio recording. It's just good sense. Um, I've selected as a speaker the large screen, right? The, the speakers in my screen. Um, there it is. <laughs> and uh, so that way I can hear your voices, but more importantly, your phone, my phone can hear the voices. Kind of have to be careful. Sometimes you get echo, but Zoom is pretty good about that. Zoom minimizes the echo, but if you're using some other system. The other thing you can do is select a camera and you might try that right now. Click on the little arrow beside your start video. Again, if you click on start video, you can turn your video on and off if you have a video camera. And I'm not sure how many of you have one. Um, Oh, yeah, there are more people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you want, you can share your video. Again, if you share your video during a conference, it might affect the bandwidth that you have available. So, um, so I've selected on mine just my plain ordinary video camera, which is why you see my face when we're having our Zoom meeting. That'll be important later. So, so far so good? Sure. We're using Zoom. We're already doing this. So let's move forward. Now, another thing we know about Zoom, because we're doing it right now, is we can share a live screen in Zoom. And uh, this is me sharing the screen right now. You're looking at the screen. And to share the screen, in Zoom, see, I'm going to stop sharing, and now I'm not sharing the screen. But to share the screen, there's a little green button right at the bottom in the middle, and you can share the screen. And you can't really see this because I'm selecting the screen to share, but it gives you like a, a whole bunch of screens that you can share from. Um, so I have two screens, like two actual physical monitors, so I can choose between screen one and screen two. For you, it might just be screen, right? If you only have one screen, if you're using a laptop or a one, you know, if I had four screens, you know, some computer gurus have like four screens, they have the half dome built, then they can choose any of the four screens. So sharing the screen. Again, pretty simple. We're doing it right now. Um, with, in Zoom, the, um, the organizer, in this case, it's Manisha, uh, has to give you permission to share your screen. And that's a very wise security precaution on the part of Zoom. Otherwise, who knows what people will share and just drop into your meeting, start sharing things. So, but that's on the organizer side. I'm just talking about as a presenter, here I am, I can share my screen. All right, well, that's straightforward. So also on Zoom, I can share specific windows. You see right now I'm sharing the screen. So, you know, I can, I can show you a bunch of different windows all at once. You know, just whatever happens to me on my screen, but I can focus on a single window and you've probably seen people do that. Um, so I'll stop sharing. Now I'm going to share a single window. What will I share? How about the PowerPoint slideshow that we're looking at? So now, you, you know, you don't see. Oh, sorry about that. I got that wrong. Stop share. I shared the screen again. <laughs> uh, so let's try that again. Share. PowerPoint slideshow. Share. So, oh, isn't that odd? 
Well, it should only show the PowerPoint slideshow. It shouldn't show anything else behind it, but okay. The main point here is you can share a specific application, a window, or you can share the whole screen. And you, you get the difference between the two, I hope. If you use Windows, you probably know the difference between the two. So that's pretty much the full complexity of OBS is what we're looking at right now. So let's think about how we're going to talk about it. On the one hand, we have the source. The source might be our camera or microphone, or it might be any of the individual windows we have on our computer. Then we have well, we've been calling it the screen. OBS calls it the scene. And the scene basically is a screen that you'll be showing. Then there's the digital signal processor, the DSP, which is the application itself. That's the bit that handles the key that we put in, remember the key that we put in, or whatever else it needs to do to send the signal from us to the target. The target in this case is Zoom. So I'm sharing my screen with Zoom, but as we'll see with OBS, we can choose different targets. So, okay. Here's open broadcasting system. We have the sources. We have the scenes. We have the DSP. And the DSP, here's the key with studio, but we can also have a thing called a virtual camera. And then the targets might be YouTube, might be Zoom, or I might save it to a local file totally your choice. And you can stream to one of these two things at the same time, but you can also stream to something and at the same time be recording. And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm saving a local recording of the video from this presentation. Now, probably just my side, but I'm not sure. Sometimes I hear the other voice, sometimes I don't. And that's it. That is OBS. And you might be thinking, wow, well, it's got to be a lot more complicated than that. Um, well, it's, it's a little more complicated than that, but it's not a lot more complicated than that. So if you've start if you've downloaded installed and installed obs you should start it up and that way you can follow along in obs open broadcasting systems with what i'm showing but let me stop while people are starting up their obs's and see if there are any comments or questions to this point uh, Alida has a question, and um, have you ever set up OBS to broadcast a video on your desktop through Zoom? Yep, I've done it, and and it can be done. In fact, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. I'm just, I'm not showing you at this exact moment, but I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Any other questions? All the attendees are welcome. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask a question or raise your hand. Or both. Oh, there's chats, there's chats in the chat. Um, oh, okay, and that was, that's, okay. That's from Alita. Okay. All right. So let's assume that your Zoom is up and running, or if it's not up and running, let's pretend it's up and running. So 
I'm going to show you my Zoom. So I'm going to share my screen again. Share. So here I am in the live studio, and I actually have people watching this live broadcast, which is pretty cool. We peaked at four people. This is this is about my average attendance on my live broadcasts, and you know that's fine um, because. It's making a recording on YouTube that I can share with other people later uh, automatically, even if I wasn't saving it myself. YouTube is saving this recording. Um, and, and people like to, to watch it later on. Um, and I find that just, just when I'm trying to do stuff, if I broadcast it live and think aloud, as though I have an audience, which may be only two or three people, it actually helps me learn whatever I'm doing that much more. It's, it's an interesting kind of reflective kind of learning. There's probably a research paper in that somewhere. I don't know if anybody's written on, you know, narrating your process while live streaming your efforts to do something on an application program. Um, but, but it works for me. Okay, so let's bring Zoom into the screen. Now, remember, we're gonna get this horrible effect here. So just ignore that part. And in fact, why don't I get rid of that part? Because remember, there are scenes and sources. And so here are my sources down here at the bottom. Here are my scenes. So I've actually got a few already selected, but let, let's get rid of all of my sources. <laughs> Can I do that? Sure. Uh, remove video capture device. Yeah, I'm not using it anyways. Remove display capture. Oh, look at that. Isn't that easier? Lose audio input capture. Uh, maybe I'll leave that because that's my microphone. <laughs> okay. And scenes. Let's get rid of that scene. And let's get rid of the webcam because I'm not using it anyways. All right. And we'll leave desktop. So here I am quite literally a blank slate. So let's pick some sources first of all. So in this sources window, can I make this bigger? Uh, not really. Eh? Oh, okay, that just popped it out. So that's pretty handy. If I just click on that little window, double window there, I just pop it out, right? So I'll make it bigger for everybody to see. So, in fact, oh, I can't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, silly me. I thought I could reduce the whole window without. Never mind. Okay, so here are my sources. There we go. That's easier to see. I'll stop that. Sometimes. <laughs> It, it lets you move things around and uh, sometimes it takes over what you're doing there. Okay. Now, so any, anywhere you see this sources box, usually, it, like I say, it lives down in this lower left and that's usually where I leave it. Uh, click the plus and you can add a new source. Look at that. Audio input capture, that's my microphone. Audio output capture, that's the output from anything my computer is doing. Usually I don't use it. Browser, that's, a, that's not your actual browser. That's a built-in web browser for OBS, specifically for OBS. I never use it. Color source, 
that you see how my background window is black i can use color source to turn it a different color i've used that once <laughs> display capture so display capture is the display on something so suppose i wanted to create a new one i'll click okay and now it's capturing my display or the source i've made my display a source i have two choices display one that's the first screen or i could choose my second screen and my second screen is where i'm actually uh running zoom so look at that right there here's all of us and that's a beautiful scene from the middle of Saskatchewan. So I'll choose that. So now I've made display capture as a source. If I wanted, I could also make my other window another display capture source. So why don't I do that? Display capture two. Maybe I should name these, right? So this would be my right window or right screen. And the other one, okay, the other one will be my left screen. So let's edit that. I just double click on it to edit. Properties for, maybe I can't change the name of it. Eh, not a big deal. Let's just remove this. I'm going to right click remove yes let's get rid of it now i'll add a new display capture i'll call it my left screen okay make source visible yes okay choose my left screen okay so there we go. I've got two sources, my right screen and my left screen. I'm going to fiddle around with this a bit, but I just wanted to let you get the feel for it, right? Normally I do this right real fast, right? Display, pick a screen, and I don't even name it because I'm lazy. Okay, so that's good. Let's get rid of this. We'll put this back down here where it belongs. All right. So now I have two sources on my screen. Now I want to make a scene. A scene is what we're going to send out. So I'll just call it my screens. Okay, so I'm making a scene <clears throat> called my screens. Right now it's blank. And down here it says, you don't have any sources. Okay, well, that's true because I've, it's a brand new scene. So I'm gonna click on the plus in sources. I'm gonna pick display capture. I'm gonna add my left screen. There it is. So now my left screen is in my scene. You see how the terminology is messy. Now I can resize this. You see how there's a red line around it? I can resize this any way I want and I want. I can also move it. So there is my left screen to the left. Pretty good, huh? And now you probably figure out what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna choose another source, uh, another display capture, this time the right screen. Okay, I'm gonna resize that. 
move it to where I want it. And there we go. Now I can broadcast that. And in fact, I am broadcasting that. If we go to the, remember I started up with YouTube earlier, I haven't turned it off. So let's go to YouTube. Here's the live that we're looking at. This is what I'm broadcasting. Isn't that cool? I know it's a little fuzzy here. That's because uh, I'm broadcast over rebroadcast. <laughs> Sorry, did someone have something to say? Or no, that was just my screen, wasn't it? So if you're on OBS, you've opened OBS. So here it is, I'll open it up again. You might try that. So usually what I do is I just, I start by making a screen. So let's make a new screen, try this for yourself. So add new scene. Okay. So now here's my new scene, it's all blank. And then I just start picking my sources. Now I could pick display like I did before. Let's try something a bit different. Somebody asked if I could use video and sure. Um, let's see, VLC, video source, we could try that. Let's do that. Uh, hmm. I've never used this. So I'm just figuring out this out on the fly. <laughs> Loop playlist, playlist. I don't have anything on my playlist. So let's pick playlist, add files. So let's add a file. I keep my videos in video. So here's something that I did not too long ago. So I'll open this. And okay. So good enough. Loop playlist. So there's my playlist. Loop just means it'll play through the loop over and over, which means it'll just play this video over and over. So I'll click OK, because I think I'm set. Oh, look at that. It's my video and it's playing. And if you notice down here, the audio mixer, normally we don't even need to think about that, but it's helpful because it tells me, it's also broadcasting the audio from my video to, well, my, my live stream. So here I am playing a video on my live stream. I think that's pretty cool. But what if the video, right, let's kill this. <laughs> uh, how do I stop? Well, I have video controls. How about that? I can go back to the beginning. I can go all the way to the end, anywhere I want in the middle. So, but let's just keep this stopped for now. What if, now this was, a file on my desktop, but what if the video I want to play is on YouTube? Well, let's remove this from my scene. It's pretty cool, but let's remove it. So I just hit the minus sign there and get rid of it. And here's what you guys should do as well. See, I could have just picked a media source instead of VLC media video source, but let's try the browser. Browser. 
Okay, now, like I said, this is just a, a built-in browser. So you put in your URL here, and that's what we'll see on the screen. So let's find a URL that we want to show. So here's my browser. Let's go to YouTube, find the video. Uh, he's showing a blank screen. Uh, what do we want? <laughs> um, uh, let's show a little football. No, I'll get in trouble for that. <laughs> Um, I'll get, what I mean by that is I would be showing some copyright content. I don't want to show some copyright content because otherwise YouTube will complain and take down my video and that would be bad. So I'll pick one of my own videos and hopefully uh, here's a quick test I did yesterday. So here I'll capture the URL close that. Let's put the URL in here. So that was a uh, control V for paste. And I'll click OK. And there's the video. This is just me testing a live stream. Just testing a live stream. Thank you. This is me done testing a live stream. And that's me playing a YouTube video using the browser in OBS. And remember I said loop, it should just start it over again. And no, because YouTube's using autoplay. So happily, this is another one of my own videos. So I'm not getting in trouble still, but okay. So I have a lot less control over this. If I really wanted control over this, I'd have to go back into the browser. It's pretty annoying. I don't like it. So let's get rid of it. Here's another way of doing it. Let's open up YouTube in my browser. Let's play the video. I'll even this is just me testing mode. a live stream. Just testing a live stream. Thing. Let me stop the video for a sec and I'll back up a bit. Let me go to OBS. Let me select the source. Instead of display capture, I want to capture a specific application. So window capture. So I'll just call this browser. And which window? Well, look at the windows I have running, right? I could choose quick test. Here we go. So that's good. There's my browser. There's my video in my browser. Now I'll play this. And this is just me I'll testing make it a full screen. screen. Just testing a live stream. Thank you. This is me done testing a live stream. See, now that it's full screen, that's what's showing in my video stream. And if we go quickly enough, we can see it. There it is. You see how it's a full screen now and brought it back down again. So I think that's cool too. So you might try that right now. Find a website that you want to show or a video that you want to show. Get the URL. Let's get Twitter. <laughs> right. Open up OBS. Pick a scene. Add a source. 
window capture. So Firefox, is that's where I'm looking at Twitter. Okay. Firefox, home, Twitter. There we go. Showing myself working on Twitter. This is how I make my videos. Um, one thing I do a lot is I do videos of a lot. I've done it a few times. Videos of me doing programming. So I use an application called Visual Studio Code. Here it is. So yeah, programming. And I can share it, pick a source, window capture, VS Code, which is Video Studio Code. OK. And now I'm going to find it somewhere. Hmm. Firefox Thunderbird, it doesn't seem to be available. I don't know why. Well, you can't capture all applications, unfortunately. So, and in fact, I very rarely, just as a matter of course, I very rarely choose specific applications to show. Um, so I'm going to cancel this. What I do, and let's get rid of that. Yes, I want to remove browser. Let's get rid of Firefox. Yeah, let's get rid of that. What I do is I create a scene. And then one of the things that I show is a window. And I already have some windows defined, so I'll add an existing window. Okay. Hmm. Being annoying. I don't know why. It should have let me just add a window. Oh. Add a display, right? Uh, display capture. Add existing. There we go. Left screen. And usually, what I'll do is I'll pick a screen, and that'll be what I use for my main display. You notice you can overlap it like that for some better effects, and then I'll add. Usually my video capture device, that's my camera. So there we go. I only have one camera hooked up at the moment. Um, so I don't think I'll be able to use it because I'm using it for Zoom. Let's give it a try, see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> nothing happening here. Because I'm using it for Zoom. So that's, that's a big drawback, right? Okay, here's something neat. I'm gonna remove this from my scene. Oh yeah, I'm gonna remove this from my scene. Something I can do is share my Zoom meeting. And this is the way to set it up. If you want to do a video thing with some guests, three or four or 10 guests, and you want an audience of 100 people, and you don't want to put 100 people on Zoom. So you hold your Zoom meeting you have 10 people like we have, and then you stream it using YouTube. Now we're currently streaming using YouTube. So I could just do my Zoom meeting, couldn't I? Of course I could. So this will be a bit tricky to see, 
but we can see it nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is pick my other window. So I'll pick my left window. I could pick the actual Zoom application, I believe. Well, uh, there's the meeting controls. That won't help me very much, right? That's just my Zoom meeting controls. That's not really what I want to show. Um, so I'll just pick a window or a display, I should say. So let's cancel that. So get rid of that. All right. Get rid of that. So I'll capture a window. I'll capture my left hand window. My display, I keep saying window, I mean screen or display. So there it is. And now I'm capturing that. So right now you're seeing my screen share. And I need to make sure to size it so that people can see it. Now, you're not going to be able to see this because I'm going to be stopping the screen sharing. So I'm going to stop sharing. Now we're just in the Zoom meeting. Oh, okay, I'm gonna come back to what Lisa said there in a second. Here's the Zoom meeting. And now I'm broadcasting this Zoom meeting over YouTube, even with the comments on the side. And maybe I'll try to get somebody to say something. We'll just test that. Manisha or someone, could you just speak into this Zoom meeting? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, we sincerely appreciate learning from Mr. Professor Downers. And here is a question posed by Lisa. Uh, the audio from the video you played from your computer didn't broadcast, even though it looked like it was playing in the audio mixer. I've used OBS to broadcast videos from the desktop, mm -hmm. and you need to use the virtual camera and change the camera mic inputs in Zoom. Uh, need to change yeah. the virtual camera and change the camera mic inputs in Zoom. I found it a bit complicated to set up. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's, in fact, that's where we're going to close our topic here. Um, now, you did not hear the video that was broadcasting in Zoom. I agree. Um, but if you go back and review the YouTube live stream later, you will have heard it. But Lisa is absolutely right. If I wanted to, I can use OBS and instead of broadcasting to YouTube, I can send my live stream into Zoom. Now, right now, we're doing our, our live stream of Zoom to YouTube. So now what we're going to do is try to do the live stream to Zoom. Uh, and I'll leave it streaming to YouTube. We'll see what happens. Should all work, but it's not something I've tried to do before all at once. I've done both things separately, but okay. So what you need to make this work is as, as Lisa says, a virtual camera. So let's go back to screen sharing again. Oops. Share screen. There we go. Screen one. Sharing my screen. So now I'm still sharing on YouTube. I'm sharing this screen. You kind of have to keep it straight in your head, right? On YouTube, I'm sharing this screen. But in the meeting, I'm sharing this screen. Um, so on YouTube, all they're seeing is what's inside this red box. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> um, but for you in Zoom, you're seeing this whole screen. Kind of 
tricky to do, right? Oh, except that, yeah, no, that's right. So effectively, I'm sharing display number one with Zoom. I'm sharing display number two with YouTube. Cool, eh? All right. So now what you need to make this work is something called OBS Virtual Can. And I actually put a link to it in the slides and I'll make these slides available after, but I'll also put the link in the chat right now. Um, if I can, I have to stop sharing to get into the chat. Hang on a sec. Okay, here's the link to OBS Virtual Cam. Now I'll start sharing again. If you follow that link, you'll go to this page. We'll accept the cookies because we don't care. And if you want, now what this is, this is a plugin for OBS. So you have already downloaded OBS, already installed OBS. Now you go to this page, you go to the download, and it does one of these save file things. You click save file. And this is in Firefox. If you're in Chrome or Internet Explorer, your save file will be slightly different. If you're in Apple, well, I can't help you. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, but it'll be different again. Um, so you click on in Windows, you, Firefox, you click on this little arrow, click on that to install it. I've already installed it, so I don't need to click on this. You click on that, it installs it, and then you start up OBS. So it's a tool. Um, I don't think we'll see it in tools. We might see it in settings. Uh, stream, output, audio, video, da, da, da. no, I'm not seeing it. But there is a place where you turn on your virtual camera. I'm trying to find that. Because I only ever do it once in a while. <laughs> Tools. Output. Oh. Let's find out together. Turn on OBS virtual camera. I use Google all the time. Uh, Steve, uh, Lisa is saying that it's bottom left of OBS screen under controls. Okay. So search, 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 bottom left of OBS screen under controls. Okay, duh. Start virtual camera. Okay, you should see it down there. So start virtual camera. All right, so now the virtual camera is playing. What does that mean? It's the it's as though I have another video camera, except instead of showing my face, it's showing this screen. So how do you use that? Let me go into Zoom. Oh, well, this is going to be kind of complicated to show. <laughs> Uh, okay, but uh, if you're watching the video, let's see now, how am I going to show this? <laughs> it's, I, it's almost impossible to show, but remember, oh, I know what I'll do. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, oh I might not be able to do that either. <laughs> This is really hard to show. Um, so remember when we saw in the slides, which I've closed because I'm silly. Uh, so here we'll open up the slides again. This slide. Remember when we saw this slide here? Oops. 
and down near the bottom, we had the camera to choose from. If you've installed the plugin, you'll see an option, OBS virtual camera. Um, and that's exactly what it says. So my options say HD Pro webcam, uh, a couple other virtual cameras, and then OBS virtual camera. You select that. So I'm going to select it. Now, when I stop sharing my screen, look here. Oh, well, you can't see it. Well, look at my screen. <laughs> you should be seeing my screen instead of me. So this is pretty cool because now I'm not sharing my screen. This is my camera. And what you are seeing instead of my camera is my screen. I'm using OBS as a virtual camera to broadcast into Zoom. In other words, we come down. Well, we're not going to see that, are we? Well, yeah, because what what are we seeing? We're seeing mostly my left hand screen because that's what I'm sharing with the uh, with OBS. Let me go into OBS. Uh, I'm going to change scenes. Remember this scene. So here's, here's what I did. I'm gonna share my screen to show you. All right, so here we are, we're back in OBS having a look here. I can move between desktop scenes. Sometimes we call this a scene transition. I can, I can actually control how that happens. So suppose I wanted it to swipe. Pretty cool, eh? Or stringer, I don't know what that is. I hardly ever use transitions. I just go with the default fade. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, fade the color, Luma wipe. That sounds fun. Okay. That's just another wipe. So I just stay with the default fade. Excuse me. So now when I'm broadcasting, stop screen sharing. Now I'm broadcasting directly from OBS into my video feed in Zoom. Now, whatever I do in OBS is what you're going to see. So here I am switching screens. And since I'm not using my video camera, I might be able to make that work. It's iffy, right? I'm going to go to a video source, uh, video capture device. Let's see if I can't capture it. Oh, it looks like it's going to let me. There we so, go. So, Professor Downers, Elida, has, her comment is, I've read in instructions to name virtual cam as a source. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what you're doing. You choose virtual camera as a source. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can also do that. Oh, as a sorry, as a source in Zoom, right? That's that's is that's what you're doing here. So and that's how you would hear the video in Zoom. Let me, um, we're still in the screen. Let me add another source here. 
you can't see me doing this, but I'm doing it. So I'm going to, oh, I'll just do it this way. Uh, instead of looking at that, let's go to a browser. Let's go to YouTube, not that YouTube, this YouTube. Let's go to my channel. That's just to avoid copyright issues. Let's go to my quick test video. You should be hearing it. This is just me testing a live stream, just testing a live stream. Thank you. This is me done testing a live stream. And you do hear it. Awesome. So that's our introduction to OBS. Uh, I think that's as much as I want to do in one day. Um, so think about what you've learned. Uh, Remember way back at the beginning how we set up our video streaming by clicking on this create button and then go live. Now we're already going live, so I don't want to do that again. Um, but here, here's the live stream, right? Remember that we had to get the, uh, the key from YouTube and input it into OBS, settings, and then stream settings. So the stream key, we had to put that in there. And then OBS itself, the major elements of OBS, it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Um, I tend to forget what I'm doing. <laughs> so the major elements of OBS that we talked about. So the different sources, the different scenes. Here's the key. Here's the virtual cam that I talked about. And that's how we were able to broadcast using OBS into Zoom. We picked our sources. We made a scene, then we turned on the, vir the virtual camera, and then in Zoom, we selected virtual camera as our source, as our video source. And that's it. That's all of the uh, intro to OBS. I'm going to switch back now. I've probably made it impossible to use my video camera in Zoom because I'm using it in OBS, so I'll just make it big. We, oh, that's too big. <laughs> so, um, and here, and you know, the video quality is not bad. It's not perfect because I'm running this image through my video camera, through OBS, a scene selector, a resizing sending that by virtual camera to Zoom, which is taking that as an input and sending it to you. For all that, the video quality is not bad. So usually when I do a live stream, you know, a live session um, in Zoom, where I'm going to be demonstrating, I'll start in OBS, start up the video, the uh, the virtual camera, and then log into uh, Zoom that way. Um, and I find that easier because now I'm sharing on YouTube, I'm saving a copy to my desktop, plus I'm communicating with all of you.